The, the next talk tonight will be given by someone we all know and love, Harry Verizer. And I learned tonight that Harry was actually Russell's roommate. And so uh, Harry was, began being friends with, with Russell in 1970. Um, Harry Verizer is, beg your pardon? Harry Verizer is Detroit's own Austrian economist. And Harry's book a couple years back, Did Not Have to Be This Way, is without a doubt the best historical um, and when you look at the ideas of the Austrian school, there's no better book out there than Harry's book, It Didn't Have to Be This Way. And so if you're really looking for a book that will teach you from the ground floor up, brick by brick, what the Austrian economists contributed and the order in which they contributed, there's no better book than to read Harry's. And he's also, uh, I always love pointing out that Harry is also the, the, brain, the brainchild of what I think is perhaps one of the greatest innovations to the Austrian school, which is the Austrian multiplier. But Harry's not going to be talking economics tonight. Instead, Harry's going to be talking about the wonderful ghost stories told on Piety Hill. So I introduce Harry Gorizer, folks. Thank you. Well, my adventure with Russell Kirk is entirely different than economics. So if you just want to kind of go back, uh, I went to Russell Kirk and uh, now at a, uh, actually a right to life rally uh, in 1972, when it was on the ballot, the right to life question was on the ballot. And I met him then. And uh, later it led to a friendship of 20 some years. Uh, I was the assistant to the president at Hillsdale College, and Russell would speak there. And uh, he was staying, he would come down once a year, and he would do a semester of lecturing, but he wouldn't be there the whole time. And so he would stay with, uh, in this motel, and I said, Dr. Kirk, I've got an extra room in my apartment. Why don't you just bump down, and you can have that room, and uh, you know, all set. So we were roommates for three years, in that sense. And he would come, lecture at the college, stay with me, and then he would go back to Acosta. His speaking schedule was, was pretty much packed, so he would be coming and going. But during that time, we had a wonderful, wonderful relationship. And I heard all the ghost stories. In addition, Russell, I found out that Russell was um, given instructions of the Catholic faith by my Latin teacher and mentor at the University of Detroit, Father O'Neill. So we had a number of connections, including the fact that Russell was born in the same month, in the same year as my dad. So there was a, a real connection there. But to come to the ghost stories, you have to understand what was a spiritualist phenomenon that lasted all from about the 1890s into the 1920s. And that was where people would actually come to houses and they would do seances, they would attempt to contact the dead. I think that pretty much died out with the death of, of Harry Houdini, who died here in Detroit. And Houdini was big into that. And Arthur Conan Doyle was big into that. It was big in England came to the United States, and my mother even told me stories of neighbors that would have these seances, and we would call them spiritualists. So Russell's family was heavy into this. They were, by religion, Swedenborgians, uh, and they would hold these seances. And Russell actually had a table in this um, in the large living room that he would he claim that they would all get around this table and invoke the spirits, and this table would levitate. They could levitate the table not by picking it up from the bottom, but by, on the top, which <clears throat> indicates the presence of spirits. And I asked Dr. Kirk one time, I mean, he remembered that he, was, he grew up in this milieu of spiritualism. He converted to Catholicism in 1964. But before that, he was an expert at reading tarot cards. And Halloween was his favorite holiday. And anybody who has not ever celebrated Halloween has never been to Macosta at that time. Because he would put his doctoral robes on, which uh, from the uh, University of um, St. Andrews was a bright yellow. Okay, I, I've never seen a doctoral robe like that, but any of that, he would wear this, and they would have uh, in the tower, they would have various screechy sounds coming out, and people would come in, and, and it was a real uh, adventure in the town. And of course, all the kids would come up. And Russell would have all the spook house kind of things, and he would talk to them. But his more interesting stories, 
and he told me, he said, uh, he gave up the tarot cards completely because he told something with a net and uh, she uh, almost experienced, she had one of those Corvairs that flipped over and that happened to her. And at that point he said, look, there's something to this. And he dropped it. But he did, he did understand that there was a dark side. Okay, now remember, when we deal with the dark side, you have to understand the words of Christ. Okay, and if you don't understand this about Satan, you don't understand anything about Satan. Now what did Christ say? He was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. Okay, wherever you see lying and murderer, he's probably around. Okay, now remember, Diabolus in, Latin, uh, in Greek comes from the break apart. So Satan is constantly trying to break things apart. And now we'll go to Halloween and the origin of Halloween. Halloween was actually a holiday called a Hallow's Eve. And the day after Halloween is the Feast of what? All Saints. Okay? And the Feast of All Saints, what would happen is, is that people in Europe, where Halloween was started, would actually go out and beg, and they would not want people to know them, so they would put on costumes, sometimes a saint. And they would go out and beg, and then that money would be given to the poor. So when I was a boy, we never said trick or treat. We always said help the poor. That was the, the when I grew up, that was the standard thing. Later, it became it morphed into, and I don't know if that was our secular society, it more morphed into the concept of horror, the concept of the dead coming back. <coughs> but obviously, when we honor the saints, well, they have died. And um, remember, those of you who are Catholic, that uh, after the, the eight days, we have All Souls Day, which we pray for the souls of purgatory, and then there's a, um, an indulgence attached for the other days. But coming back to it, so I asked Russell, I said, what did you think about these ghosts? And he would talk about the reality of the ghosts. He said, Cicero, the Roman statesman and philosopher, said, these are purgatorial souls. These are souls that somehow in their life have done something that maybe not right, that they have to straighten out, and before they get to heaven, they're wandering. So the idea is, is that there was something with the dead, that they were they were looking at these purgatorial souls. Well, anyway, to get back to Russell. So Russell had the experience with this. He grew up in it. The house obviously was haunted by these ghosts. And um, when the house burned down Ash Wednesday, he had pictures of the house burning. It was in the Macosta paper. And you could see in the windows of the, uh, of the house figures in the flames. As the flames were burning, you could see figures in the flames. And at that point, he, at least a lot of those stopped. But what people were used to hear would come there is they would hear the typewriters, or they would hear a baby crying. And so uh, I asked Russell about that. And uh, uh, Jim told you about the two that, uh, that uh, Monica saw, these two ghosts. Now, after the house burned down, they were gone. Okay, once the house had, had burned down, those two ghosts never reappeared. But there was no question that I think the spiritualism had attracted the spirits. And there is another world uh, of those spirits that come and had attracted them. And uh, wherever there was something like a suicide or something like that, you will see in those houses uh, there's a, uh, a presence, okay? Um, and it's, uh, it's a presence of discord. Now, I can tell you, uh, I don't mean to turn this into a sermon, but I can tell you in my own company, when I have my company, uh, we were having all kind of discord in our company. And I saw, I walked into the lunchroom, and there was a Ouija board. And I came down with the full authority of the chairman of the board to the uh, to the uh, foreman. I said, I want out there, I want that out of here now, immediately. And I had a priest exercise the building. And what happened? The spirit of discord was here. So there is a there is a spirit that does come. And Russell would talk about it. He would talk about his experiences with ghosts in Scotland and the haunted castles that he went to in Scotland. And uh, he would talk about the, the ghosts that would appear in various houses in Macosta and what had happened in those houses and the spirit that was there and that was 
left. And um, there was no question about the fact that when he wrote, remember, he was also no, not known just as a, a political writer, but he was known as a writer of science fiction. And he had the imagination to understand it. And there was always this dark side that he would talk about, the spiritual dark side, that Russell understood. And Russell, if you, uh, there's a new biography that's come out, talking about Russell's early life. And he, when he was a young man, he had, uh, was aware of a lot of the dark side. A lot of authors, like myself, I'm not a, a much aware of it, being an Austrian and Calvinist, you know, working across the world, all those good things. But Russell really understood that. And we used to go out and we'd go out, and it was, it was a wonderful time in my life because he would, he would teach and he would come home and I'd have dinner prepared. And um, he would talk about his various experiences that he had. He talked about how he was going through Scotland and the castle and he had this specter following him through the castle and through the various um, byways of the town in Scotland and in York. And uh, Russell spent a lot of time there. He, he remembered the, and he made friends, even though he was poor as a church was, he made friends with a lot of the aristocracy who would invite him into these homes that were haunted. And so when he came back to Macosta, he was, his, he remembered his daughter talking about these two ghosts that would appear. And obviously, obviously there were various specters that would appear. But uh, in a sense, if you go up there today, um, I have never experienced it, and I haven't talked to anybody for a number of years who have experienced it. And I think the reason was is that Annette had the house exercised. Okay. And uh, that's a very important thing. Uh, my warning to you uh, is this, is I have a, a priest friend of mine, he's passed away, who was the exorcist for the city, of, uh, for the diocese of Detroit, found the sick king. And he would tell me the stories of it. And I would tell you this, do not ever touch Ouija boards, tarot cards, or anything else. Because he said that what's happening is a lot of people are picking up a spirit that they may not want. And remember the story of Saul. Saul started dealing with the witches of Endor, and he had this thing attached to him that actually drove him uh, almost mad. There's only David who played the harp and would uh, quiet the spirit down. So, do the spirits exist? Yes. Should you avoid them? Absolutely. You don't touch anything to do with it. And Russell then converted, um, was baptized, and then married in that. And um, he himself, said he would never touch the tarot cards again, and nobody touched that. But he said the tarot, he knew how to read tarot cards. And he knew that part of, um, of uh, the, uh, the order. He knew the spiritual part of the order directly. And he said, yes, he says, this stuff does work. And I remember we talked about a woman by the name of Madame Blavatsky. I remember the stuff started in England. Arthur Conan Doyle was involved in it. It started with Madame Blavatsky, and he said, he said, uh, Russell said to me, well, he said, uh, you know, he said, she had certain powers. I've looked at pictures of her, and the eyes are something to behold. And uh, I, I will finish, because I want to let our author of uh, short stories go on. But um, Chesterton said, the danger of the superstition isn't that it doesn't work, but that, that it does. So I'll finish on that. Uh, no, tonight I'll turn it over to our next speaker. I told you there was going to be a trip, didn't I? Uh, <laughs> Harry, thank you very much for that. It's, uh, it's very interesting. Um, my, my, I'm often asked what is my favorite book, and I, I always say the Screw Tape Letters. And it is in the Screw Tape Letters that. C.S. Lewis tells us through the demonic tempter, screw tape, that there are two ways that man can fall amongst the devils. One is to have an unhealthy attraction for them, and the other is to not believe in their existence. And so, thank you very much for, the, for that. Uh